good to have a plan. One. <laughs> I'm Sonia. I'm Avon. And I'm Kate. And today we're dishing with you from the brand new RIS at 2275 L Street Northwest. Today our guest today is RIS Lacoste, who is the restaurateur, owner, and chef of this new brand new restaurant, RIST, where, where we are today. That's and good. how does it feel to open your new restaurant? Uh, very exciting. Um, well, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> very, um, I, mean, I want to say scary, <laughs> but that's okay. I don't know if I can say that on TV. Sure, you can, can. Sure can. say yeah. that. Um, no, it's absolutely wonderful. I have been waiting for this day for so long, and I'm a schoolgirl giggling every day. And I know I shouldn't be. Um, because there's so much to do, and it's a very, very, um, very, very intense, uh, very um, anxious time right now. Mm -hmm. But it's really, really exciting. This is what I was put on this earth to do, to do, and I cannot wait till the doors open. It's what's all that main, fun work. What's your main influence behind uh, the behind the, the restaurant? I've touched every detail of this restaurant, so it's hard to say. I haven't even gotten into the kitchen yet, so I can't wait for that to happen because that is what I do. I know it hasn't even opened yet, I and mean, everything know. here is just. We're, Actually, we're, they're still setting up, and right. so, I mean, it's a lot of decor. Though. But when people will watch it, they can actually, today is the day that you can come here for dinner. So, d when you say that you haven't even gotten into the kitchen, does that mean you don't really even have a menu prepared at this point? Oh, or? the menu is prepared, of course, where this is today, so right. we're filming this before we open, right. so sorry about right. that. Um, um, no, to start, just to start cooking, so much of opening a restaurant is a preliminary stuff. It starts with lease negotiations and financial, raising funds, and... Um, all of the things that have to go on, there are, there are just a million decisions that have to be made. So it's all a different part of the brain that is working. And in the restaurant business, you know, we get our rewards every single day. We feed 200 people delicious hot food. You get out at the end of the night and you're smiling and people, oh my God, you're the chef. And yes, and you make people happy. Your day ends, you sleep well at night because your day is over and it starts all over the next day. Doing something, a project of this, you know, length, I've never done, you know, I haven't done before. So it's, it's, um, you find yourself with no rewards, you know, that mm. you get small rewards and small decisions are made, um, big decisions are made, but there's just, it's just a long stretch of time. So I can't wait to get back in the kitchen and making people happy again and getting those rewards and getting rewarded every day just by a beautiful dish. I mean, look at that lamb shank and look how good it smells and how gorgeous is it. And I just can't wait. You so, made me want it right now. I know. I want it right now. I don't know why you say that you shouldn't be giggling like a schoolgirl because you absolutely should. This is an incredible endeavor, but I have to say, I have been a fan of yours for a long time. The first time I ever tasted your food was at 1789. Mm -hmm. There I think you became one of the celebrity chefs in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., definitely. And since then, everyone has been talking about you opening this place. I mean, we have been waiting. I live very close by and I pass by it and I want to, I, every time I see, oh, there's paint now. Okay, now they have furniture. Okay, now we're, so um, I want to ask you, are any of the dishes from 1789, any of your specialties, can we can we enjoy any of those here? Is sure. this totally new? No, absolutely, because there are a few favorites. And in fact, I'm creating a daily dining concept here um, at RIS, and um, Mondays will be meatloaf. Um, oh. So I really want to do it. Um, but speaking, speaking to 1789, Thursday night is um, rack of lamb oh. night. So only on Thursday nights are you, everyone will be able to get the rack of lamb that I served at 1789, just as I served it there. So um, I oh, know everyone is asking um, for that. And the only, other, the only other thing right now in the menu is scallop margarita, which has been a really fabulous scallop ceviche dish, um, which I'm putting on the menu, which I ordinarily would only put in the summer, but I'm just opening with it because it's been, it was such a hit of everyone. So. What about vegetarian? Tons of vegetarian food. Um, I'm really no, trying to. I, all these meat, 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 which is fine because I love meat, but you know, sometimes you want a little corn. Um, I'm hoping to have a little bit of everything. The menu is really, I have to have that final uh, glance at it. I'm very, very, um, very important to me that it's balanced, that, some, that there's lots of healthy food, there's a lot of superfoods, that it's food that What's is just going food? to be good for you. F f blueberries are superfoods, uh, and walnuts, mm -hmm. and berries, and. Um, just all kinds of you know sweet potatoes, yeah. um, all yeah. kinds of really Most good things. For, if it's at the market, it will be on the menu. Um, I really want to have a balanced menu that no matter what you enjoy eating, that you have a, a, there's a, there are great choices and great options. So there's going to be rack of lamb, and there's going to be lamb shanks, and there's going to be great steak, but there's going to be fabulous salads and and wonderful great seafood dishes from New England and, and all over. I mean, just very international concept. And how much of that shopping is going to be done locally? How much of that market Well, shopping? we are going into winter season, so there's not a lot of local things happening, but everything that is at the market, um, 
today, right now, will be on the menu. So, um, and then as spring comes in and as the seasons roll in, and we get into the heart of summer, they'll be it will just be on fire with great fresh, you know, uh, seasonal produce as well as fish. I mean, fish is seasonal mm -hmm. too. Seafood is seasonal and all of that. So I'll definitely follow the seasons. Now, speaking of location, and let's get really hyper local here for a second. Why did you choose the West End neighborhood to open your new place? You could have opened anywhere in the city. Actually, you could have opened anywhere in the country, well, and you chose nice to open right here. So. Um, um, what is it about this neighborhood that you thought you fit in here? Well, my goal was I looked for an underserved neighborhood. And I just remember I was in Georgetown for 10 years, and I loved my corner of 36 and Prospect. And being in a neighborhood and having regulars come in who, who knew me and who came in every day, and I would see them. So I just really wanted a neighborhood. And um, I met this space, and, and amazingly enough, in May of 2006. I've been fighting for it ever since, and now it's mine. Um, um, I have a great partner, Mitchell Herman, who has, is my partner in this deal, and he helped to make this happen, and, and so this has been a dream that's been in the works for three and a half years. So, and we're here. And it's, it's, a, it's a neighborhood, it's a neighborhood. It's this this right. restaurant now, is enormous. Yep. I mean, it just keeps going on, and, and being here so early, we got a, I, I got a chance to look at some of the construction plans. It goes on and on and on, so there's, yep. there's so many people who can be served by this restaurant, and can't wait to be yeah. one of them. Before we continue, desserts. Ooh, oh, good question. Well, I have Chris Gujala, who was pastry chef for uh, award-winning pastry chef. He was at Kincaid's for many years, mm -hmm. and uh, which is one of my one of my family homes. I opened Kincaid's, and so we're very excited to have him. So again, we'll have lots of seasonal desserts on there. I'm not a real sweet dessert fan, so uh, Chris and I haven't worked together actually. So we're getting to know each other and really getting to uh, say, this is what I like, this is what I don't like. And, and we really tr get the desserts to balance and to work with the menu. We'll have things like Indian pudding on, on Fridays, which is a lot of New England seafood. So Indian pudding is a classic. Um, a classic New England dish. Well, you know, butterscotch pudding is one of my favorite desserts, Absolutely. and so we're going to have that on there. And but just different rustic. The, the 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 whole restaurant is a balance of rusticity, rustic elegance. We call it and, and oh. sophisticated comfort. It's a neighborhood cafe. Um, it is in the West End, and we're really trying to balance out all of my past lives. So there's a huge, a lot of thought has been put into the menu, of course, and between all the different courses and yep. different uh, genres and international yep. uh, portions as well. So what is your favorite dessert, you personally? Maybe you might, even, you might not even offer it here, but what is your favorite dessert? Oh gosh, my favorite dessert is a hot fudge sundae. And it's going to be it's coffee ice cream with swirls of hot fudge and salted to toasted almonds, chocolate covered toasted almonds. Oh, well, she knows exactly what done. she likes. Well, Liz and I got cream wait, and what is maraschino it gonna, what's cherry. It gonna what's it going to be called? What's it going to be called? Hot fudge sundae hot with jamocha almond fudge ice cream. There we go. Our last question that we have time for, we, we really have to ask you because D.C. is becoming a destination mm -hmm. of all kinds of culture, but mm -hmm. definitely a restaurant destination, and we want to hear your thoughts on where this is going. On where, the, on, on D.C.? On D.C.'s restaurant but, culture in general. Well, I'm a, you know, good person to ask because I've been here for 22 years and I've watched the culture. I, I opened 21 Federal in 1987. and. Um, I think we were the second new restaurant um, that opened, and so I've really watched the development of, of restaurants, and I'm hoping for a restaurant culture. D.C. is very transient. People move in and out, as we know, with the government. It's a government city. It's been very, it's tough as a restaurateur because people move in and out, so they're not demanding excellence, but now with the last 10 years of the condominium boom and all of that, People are living in, in in town, and that's what we've been hoping for because they live here. It's their neighborhood, and they're going to demand excellence, and they want really good things. So that's what we're seeing. Um, there's a lot of us locals who are just very happy to be here and very happy to make that make D.C. a food culture town, not just a restaurant town, but a food culture like New York City is and Chicago is and um, certainly San Francisco. I mean, I, you know, California is just so, is so much food culture. Um, even Boston has so much food culture, and D.C. has been missing that because we're a microcosm of the entire country. Well, so we're getting be, there, and I'm going to help to make that happen. They're going to be demanding excellence, and they're going to be right. demanding reservations right here. I hope so. Open now. Um, thank you very much for joining us. And as always, thank you for joining us here on this episode of The District Dish. Thank you.